All right, we'll just do a couple of quick measurements here. This is four large trays that are uh, 21 by 25. There are one, two, three trays that are 12 by 10. There are one, two, three, four trays that are nine by 11. There are three trays that are eight by six and a half. There are one, two, three trays that are nine by 11. And there are one, two, three, four trays that are 18 and a half by 14. Okay, there are, this is a fairly large tray uh, for washing. It has the hoses attached and some holes. This is the same thing with no ho hoses attached, just a bit smaller. I, that's just what someone explained to me. Again, I'm not an expert on this. And then there are two uh, cropping uh, trays, you know, little metal things that slide uh, for when you're cropping your photos. And there's two of those, solid metal, good shape. Okay, we have a bunch of graduated sillers, funnels, uh, etc. Different pitchers for mixing chemicals. We have the book on how to do it all. We have a couple of thermometers here. I believe that's a tray for making contact sheets. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these filter things for on the enlargers, I think. Uh, a couple of the focusing things are dense. I can't remember the fancy name. Some film rollers, film bags, squeegees to clean the film, a whole bunch of tongs, red light bulb. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Uh, this gray thing I think is for some sort of uh, draining or pumping water in and out. Again, I have no idea. Uh, clips for hanging film and lots of canisters for developing film. Uh, these are all medium format, so there's three, six, seven, and then these are all 35 millimeter, five, looks like about nine. Uh, so I'll just go back over that one more time so you can see everything. And there you go. Okay, I have a couple of timers here. So this one, uh, you can see the timer moves. You can see you can control that. Um, like I said, I haven't really used it before, so I'm, I'm hoping when this hits zero that the light goes on again. I'm assuming that's the way it works, or it turns off, one or the other. I guess we'll find out in 15 seconds. And then I have two others, and I'll make sure they work so you can see them. So let's see what happens. It's going to turn, it's not going to do anything, right? <laughs> I would definitely say that works. Okay, this is timer number two, model 555, gray lab, gray lab or something. You can see the light is on. I can turn it off and on. Um, again, not really sure how to set it. Let's just say 10 seconds and start. I don't know what's gonna happen. Well, it, it beeps. It may turn the light on or off. I may not have it set up right. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, it beeps, or maybe I don't have the light turned on correctly. Maybe it goes like this. Let's just do three seconds. Maybe, I don't know. The pressure here is intense. Okay, it did something. Um, again, I'm not exactly sure how to work it. So uh, you can see it counts. Uh, it has two outlets on the bottom here. There's a foot pedal, apparently. I don't have it, but there's some sort of foot pedal attachment. Um, yeah, that's the second one. It works. I just don't know how to use it. Sorry. Okay, this is the third enlarger or timer right here. I think I may know how to actually use this one. So you set the time. I've got it for 2.1 seconds. You can see the light is off. Uh, and then when I hit the, the actual button, it's going to go for two seconds. One, two, and turn off. So uh, that one still works, or works, at least in the way that I kind of remember how to use it. 
Okay, this is the smaller of the two enlargers. It's a Bessler 67SC. Um, so all the little things work. I'll show you the lights, but it cranks just fine. Uh, you can see there's light coming through. I'll try and open this so that you can see the bulb is on. Uh, the optics inside the best I can do. There are no cracks or scratches that I can see. Um, not that it really matters, it's just light, but uh, everything seems to be in good shape. There's a filter in there. There's a, at least one lens here. I don't know if I can see what size it is. Um, it's in pretty good shape. It's pretty clean. It needs a good dusting, that's for sure. And then there are some accessories for the lenses. I don't know what those are, but they say 67 series, so it must be for that. Uh, this says Bessler. That means something to you. It's another little lens. And then there's the 35 millimeter holder I can recognize. And then the medium formats. I'll zoom in on this. If you want to pause it, you can probably read that and get a bit more out of it. Uh, it looks like another medium format or very close, not quite square, but similar. So that's the Bessler. And yeah. All right, this is the second enlarger. It's a ProLab 4x5. It's, it's big. This is like hard for me to carry by myself, just to give you the heads up. Uh, it totally works. It's very large, very tall. Uh, so some of the highlights, there are three separate lenses underneath here. If I can remember how to rotate them, you can see they just rotate depending what you're working on and you snap them back into place. Uh, the bellows, I remember the bellows. Uh, this moves up and down. I assume that's for filters, I'm not sure. Okay, and then over here is the bellows crank. Could probably use a shot of oil. It's a little tight and squeaky, but that might just be from lack of use. Um, you can see in here, the optics are good. The light's working. All of the lenses are good. There's no cracks. Uh, the only thing that, this is why the C-clamps were on there, is this measuring here. You can see how that just pops. That little piece of metal just kind of popped off. And I don't know if that's from the cold or just the glue dried out or what. Uh, you can still crank it. It still moves just fine. Uh, but it might need some like, I don't know, epoxy or something and a couple of clamps just to lock her back on. But just that little metal piece. So I, I had a couple of C-clamps just trying to hold them on here and here, just because I didn't want it to get too far apart uh, in case I, I just didn't want it to separate. Uh, but totally fixable if, if you have some clamps and some epoxy, I would assume. Maybe somebody can tack weld it, I don't know. Um, but other than that, all the optics, the lights, uh, the pieces that make it an enlarger all work just fine. Uh, and then there are a couple of these things. Again, I don't know exactly. I think they go in between here. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so there's square and 35 millimeter. And that's the big ProLab enlarger.